Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Christopher Donald and uh, this is going to be a video about making or repairing or shortening uh, or thinning your throwing wires. Uh, it's going to kind of touch on all of those parts. So when you first buy a throwing wire, they're a, a braided um, cable basically, like a very narrow cable. And it's a round cable. So there's a couple of things wrong with a basic wire. One, they're just too long. Um, what people end up doing is because they're so long, they have a tendency to wrap them around their fingers uh, so that when they go to cut things off the wheel, they're shortening the wire. But wrapping wires around your fingers for spinning power tools, it's not the best idea. So um, in production, we would shorten our wires so that we had a six inch wire, a 12 inch wire, and then a long wire. We used an appropriate length wire for whatever it was we were cutting. And when we would shorten them, we would also thin the wires. So they start off being like a round wire, and the round wire has the tendency to kind of ride up, um, like monofilament has a tendency to ride up when you try and cut through the floor of something. So the when you split the wires, they're kind of serrated. And um, so what I'm showing here is that um, in order to take the wire out, some wires have, it looks like a, a small steel, um, like a BB, uh, like a bead. Uh, it's usually sometimes split. These inexpensive Chinese wires that I've been getting, they don't have that. Um, so this is a Kemper um, trimming tool here. And you just need to, in order to get the wire out of it, you have to use something like a, a pin tool or um, uh, a nail, ice pick, something along those lines that lets you leverage that, that BB out of the end so that um, you can loosen up the wire. Um, so I'm using this metal tool to kind of stick it in the hole of that bead and kind of just leveraging it out of the tool, out of the handle. And once you've pulled it out, then you just pull that wire out of the ball and then you can pull the wire through the handle. So that's all that's holding it on there. And <clears throat> this wire has already been thinned. So it's already a spiral, uh, but it was a little bit too long. So I wanted to shorten this one to six inches. So I just go ahead and cut it to the length that I want. And then I can reinsert the wire through the small end of the hole. The large end is where the BB sits, where the bead is Im embedded. So you want to put the wire through the small hole in the bottom. And sometimes it'll spread apart a little bit. You just have to twist it back together again. So I'm inserting that through there and then insert it through the bead. If the bead is split um, where there's like a, a, a crack down the center, make it so that the split is up so the wire doesn't pull through the split. And you're folding the wire in half and then pushing both ends back down through the hole in the handle. You want the short end and the long end to slide through that hole and then the pressure of the wire pulling on the bead is what's going to hold that in place. And So I just like to use uh, my pliers to kind of help push that down in there a little bit. And once that, that bead is seated, then I can kind of give it a little bit of a tug on the wire and make sure it's snapped into place. And there you go. I now have a six inch wire that is much, much less dangerous to use and is gonna be more appropriate for cutting smaller things off of the wheel head uh, without me needing to wrap my fingers, uh, wrap the wire around my fingers. And so I'd feel a lot more comfortable with that one. Now, you can see here that or you might not be able to, but what I was showing is that one wire is serrated, is a spiral, and the other wire is round. Okay, so then if you have a handle that isn't like uh, this Kemper one, where it doesn't have a bead that's easy to remove, then you might have to take a slightly different approach. Or say if you're making the handle uh, from scratch, if you're making a new tool, you might need to do something a little bit different with it. Uh, so what I'm going to do here 
is I've got the really nice long wire and I'm going to look and see is it possible for me to get the piece that's holding it in place out of the hole. And this one's really dug in there so at first I use the pliers to try and push the wire through from the other side but the wire is too thin and it ends up um, just bending rather than pushing the wire through. And I believe I try the other end, see if I get lucky on that end. I, I do not get any luckier on that end. And I apologize that the audio vanished from my, my video here, so I'm doing a little voiceover for you. Um, get the same information. And then I'm trying to cut the hole open a little bit with an X-Acto blade to see if I can see if there's a bead or sometimes they also have like, it's like a little coiled spring. That's the other thing I've seen used to kind of hold the wires in place. So it could be either one. And I, I have no success. I can't get at it. And digging down in there with the tool, I, I don't even feel it. So at that point, it, it's honestly not worth the effort to try and dig out what's there. And I actually purchased a, a pack of steel beads. Um, and so I'll just go ahead and just snap this wire off, just cut that right off at the, at the handle. And then I'll just drill a new hole um, coming from the other direction. And that hole will be drilled through narrow enough for the wire to fit um, and, the BB and the bead to not get pulled through. But I also have to put a, a slightly smaller end for the, the bead to sit in. All right, so after I've, I've cut the wire, I need to split the tip. And I'm using an X-Acto blade to kind of just prize the, the different um, sections apart so I'm kind of splitting the wire in half and then just getting it to to start unwinding as two bundles. The nice thing about this is you end up with twice as much wire uh, and wires wear down and, and break after a while and so when your wire breaks you can take it apart and replace it with a nice new fresh wire. So I need to get this unwinding a certain amount just by hand, and then I'll actually use the handle itself to help unwind the rest of it. So once I get some length there, I can stick that through the narrow side. And as I mentioned, um, I purchased some beads. These are four millimeter. You can see a little bag of them there. Uh, four millimeter or one eighth inch steel beads. So go ahead and there we go. Talking about which end you need to stick that through. All right, so I slide my wire through. One end is a little bit bigger. I used a slightly larger uh, drill bit to leave a kind of like a countersink for the bead to set down into. Fold the wire over. Make sure you insert both ends back down through the hole. There we go. Once I've got them kind of started correctly, I can then use my pliers and seat that bead down into the handle. So a nice, nice flush fit, nice and sturdy. And then I'm going to hold the cut end and the other end of the wire, and I'm just going to spin it so that the weight of the handle helps unwind the wire. Uh, if you've got somebody to help you with a real long wire, it's, it's nice to have somebody kind of help out with it. And I'm going to just going to keep stretching this out, get it all unwound. And then once that's unwound, I can figure out how much of this do I actually want to use. And I decided to make this into a 12 inch wire. So I got a, a six inch wire. Now I'm going to make a 12 inch wire. I get my ruler out, make sure it's actually 12 inches. Not that it matters, but if you say you're going to do a thing, you might as well do the thing. And trim this off. And I, I could take and um, cut loose that other end, that other handle, and drill holes in it and, and get it prepared to be used like I did the first one. Or you can look in my, my toolbox where I have a really embarrassing number of old broken wire handles that I haven't done anything with. 
Um, and so I, I just cut this loose and put this handle aside for later and decide to just grab one of my Kemper handles that has a little bead in it already um, and just use that as the other end. So I'll have a, a wire with two mismatched ends, which is fine. <laughs> Hopefully nobody will judge me. All right, so I have my nice little short one there. And that was just me saying that there's a, a little bit of wire. If you make that folded end too long, it'll stick down through the other side and you can kind of feel it. So I just trimmed that little bit right off. All right, I'm gonna check in my box here. I know I've got at least five or six broken wires. There we go. So nice Kemper one snapped off. That's my old six inch one. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and I'll get the bead out of that one. And I don't have to use one of my beads. Those four millimeter steel beads are super cheap. So you just, I just find them on Etsy or eBay and um, make as many trimming tools as you feel like this way. Okay, so I'll take that old split bead. I got that old wire. Just put that aside. Get my nice new wire. Put that through the small end of the hole. And then I can get that bead on there. And again, when you fold the wire over, you want enough to fit all the way through that handle, but not so much that it ex extends a long way beyond the handle, because you'll just, it'll be irritating, it'll, you'll hit your fingers on it. But you can always trim that off if, it, if that happens. Get the bead seated, and then push it into place nice with the pliers. There we go. A couple of tugs, make sure it's nice and, and in there. And there's my 12 inch wire. So, and you can see the little bag of beads. I, I think I spent maybe $4 on those. There's like 50 of them. I won't live long enough to make enough trimming tools to use all those beads. <coughs> uh, any of my students see this, if they'd like a bead, I'll put them in my toolbox and can, I'll give you two. Um, and I'm just mentioning that when I was in art school, we would make trimming tools out of, in, out of pencils. Um, if we didn't, couldn't find a dowel laying around, we were we were pretty um, pretty shameless about what we would make our trimming tools out of, but the the twisted wire cuts significantly better than monofilament or smooth wire, so keep that in mind. Um, other things that people will use is like dental floss, but really having that spiral, it slices through the clay and it doesn't lift up in the middle and cut through the center of your floor, leaving you with a thin floor or cutting all the way through, which sometimes will happen. Uh, I've never had that happen with a, with a twisted wire before. So they're much, much better for use on the wheel. If you're the kind of person that likes to keep the wheel um, spinning as you, you cut through the bottom, it leaves a kind of cool, like a shell pattern on the underside of your pot. A lot of the Greenfield Village um, pots, the production place I used to work at, a lot of them have that mark on the bottom from us doing that. I'm just uh, wrapping up my excess wire and I'll just, I have a whole drawer full of those, um, just endlessly having extra wire. The other wire that works really good for cutting, um, for cutoff tools is the, the copper wire that's, or actually the bronze wire that's left over after you make a scratching tool. So if you make one of these Valentine scratchers, I have a video for doing that. Uh, you can use that uh, leftover bit and make a cutoff tool as well. Thanks for joining me. Make sure to subscribe and you'll be alerted to new videos. I'll see you soon.